Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Football. I'm Jim Brandstetter along with John Jansen, and uh, we're celebrating Michigan victory over Washington, second game of the season. The final was 31-10. At halftime, though, this game was a 10-0 game. It was a defensive struggle. Michigan gets the ball first, and John, the opening possession of the second half, in my opinion, my humble opinion, set the stage for the rest of the game because that was an old-time Michigan drive. And the message at halftime had to be from Coach, from Josh Gaddis, that we've got to go out there, we've got to set the tone, we've got to make sure that these guys know we're not going to, we're not going to let up. And when you look at what they were able to do on first downs, plus four, on the very first time they touched the ball, plus 11 the next first down, plus 17, plus five. When you have that production on first down, the playbook is completely open, but why change anything? Josh Gaddis knew what was working and they just kept with it. And it ended up with what, eight plays, 73 yards. Every single one of them was a run, a lineman's dream. An offensive lineman's dream. But, and I want to tell all of you at home, football is a game of X's and O's and it's a game of execution but it's also a game of emotion. And, and when you, as an offense, you go out to begin the second half, and I'll tell you what Washington was saying at halftime. The coach there was saying to his kids, men, we took their best shot. We're only down 10 nothing. We get out there, we get a three and out, we get the ball back, we score, we're right in the game. When Michigan put that eight play drive together, they told Washington, without saying anything to them, emotionally, no. You're not in this game. And that's the way you play this game, and that's what that offensive line did, in my opinion. Every time you go into a football game, you got to find a way to break the spirit of your opponent. And that drive broke the spirit of Washington. Yeah, they tried different tricks as the game went on, but they knew in the long run there was nothing they could do to beat Michigan tonight. And every one of those running plays was between the tackles. Yeah. The, running, the running backs did a great job of bouncing it left and bouncing it outside, doing things and finding creases. But those plays were designed to go between the tackles. It wasn't a game or a, a drive where they did a lot of nuance and they fooled around and ran outside and did some reverses. They pounded it. And that, I think, set the tone for the entire second half and a big victory for Michigan. And they brought back something we haven't seen in a long time. You talk about running between the tackles. They were running a lot of counters. Now, yeah. they were spreading things out. They were running to a split side. But they were pulling both the backside guard and tackle. And when you do that and you have guys that are pulling around big, fast, athletic guys that are pulling around with square shoulders, you're able to block a lot of different fronts. And that's what this Washington team was. It was a unique front. But they did everything they could to make it basic, black and white for these offensive linemen. We may be boring you at home, us offensive linemen, talking about line play and blocking and all that, but it's important to the game of football to win games. And the other thing that's very important is at the end of the game, when there's six, seven minutes left, and you're up by 14, we've seen in the past, and it hasn't happened before, where Michigan puts it away, and they put it away on the ground. Well, this final drive to make it 31-10, again, on the ground, pounding it between the tackles, they knew Michigan was going to run, and they couldn't stop it. It's something this Michigan as offense has done. They've improved from week one to week two, but it's also a game of balance. And they've been able to run the ball in both against Western Michigan and against Washington, but they have to find a way to get better passing uh, downfield. They've got to find a way to get some explosive plays. They know they're not going to have Ronnie Bell back. He was the one guy that they had explosive plays from last week. They have to find a way to get balance in this offense. Down the road, they're going to need the pass. But against Washington, this offense took a big step forward by dominating the line of scrimmage with that offensive line. Coming up, we'll hear from the road graders up front and Jim Harbaugh weighs in. Michigan's defense also continues to fly around. It's good to finally be back winning, you know. Um, you look back at last year and it was just, it was hard. It was kind of dark times, you could say, with Michigan football. And um, just being here and being on this team and, um, you know, just, just back to our winning ways, you know, hopefully we can continue to do that. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store. Here's Corp, up the middle, breaks it. He's at midfield, he's in the open. Down the sideline, 50, 10, 5, touchdown, Michigan. Looked to the sideline, coach switched the play. The offensive line fired off the ball. It was one on one with the safety, and I knew he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't catch me. And so I mean, I put a little move on him, and I was gone. 
Time now for our Al Rose Steel Man of the Week. Here's Ed Ken Gersky. The Michigan offensive line was moving and grooving against the Huskies. Blake Corum rumbled for 172 yards and Hassan Haskins 155. Only the third time in program history, the Wolverines put two ball carriers over a buck 50. It was awesome. Coach really believed in us. You know, we came in here knowing we wanted to run the ball. And when you got backs like we do with Blake and Hassan, it's, it makes our job pretty easy. When the backs know the big fellas in front of them are in sync, it gives them assurance to grab the pigskin and go. It allows me to be more, way more patient. It allows me to really uh, hit the holes and use the speed that I have. And so, uh, I mean, when the, when the offensive line is firing off the ball like that, it makes my job way easy. They've been firing, firing off the ball, doing their job, uh, taking on block. They were just, I got to give up to them. You know, if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be no rushing yards. Hayes said the third quarter drive that was so crucial to the outcome of this game was a direct result of getting stifled on fourth and goal in the first half. He said, quote, we knew we had to come out and pound it down their throats. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. We talked a lot about the offensive line play and a great job of the running backs in the first segment, but football's a two-sided game, and you've got to be able to play defense. And Michigan's defense against Washington was outstanding. First of all, this day in college football, shutting somebody out in the first 30 minutes, that's not something that happens too often, and yet Michigan did it to a quality Pac-10 football team. And they did it by being able to put pressure on the quarterback. They stopped the run. They only allowed 50 yards running in this game. But when you put a quarterback under duress, you know, play in and play out. And they had four sacks. Aiden Hutchinson is all over the field. Two and a half sacks. Uh, it's just even when they didn't get there before the ball was gone, they beat up this quarterback time and time again. And there's just no way to get comfortable as a quarterback if you're always worried about who's hitting you. But the most important thing, and again, I'm going back to my dinosaur days when Bo Schembechler was coaching, you must stop the run. And this defense stopped the run. Washington had less than 50 yards rushing for the entire game. Now, that doesn't happen very often. Well, think about the teams that are good in the Big Ten, all right? Wisconsin, they've traditionally a running attack. If you're going to go to Madison, you've got to be able to stop the run. Michigan has proven that they've been able to stop the run. And now, yeah, they were able to, they gave up some big plays in the past game, but at the end of the first quarter, just so Washington could get above 100 yards uh, of total offense, that's when they gave up some big plays. At the end of the game, in the fourth quarter, they gave up some big plays. So when you take a look at when it mattered most, Michigan's defense was good both against the run and the pass. And the other thing in game two that you notice about Mike McDonald and his defense, guys, different guys are gonna shine. This game, Josh Ross, really, he was everywhere. Double digits, tackles, a lot of pressures. A week ago, it was Dax Hill. Dax Hill enjoyed this game, too. But Aiden Hutchinson, um, you saw, I thought Mazzy Smith, the interior guys, <laughs> play well. Because of the way this defense is set up, I think each game, depending upon the offense they see, different guys are going to be able to really stand out. Well, and when you have a guy like Aiden Hutchinson, at the end of the game, he was getting chipped by a tight end. He was getting chipped by a running back. They're putting three, sometimes four sets of eyes on Aiden Hutchinson. Now, all of a sudden, David Ojabo gets a sack. You've got to have other guys step up. And if it's Mozzie Smith, David Ojabo, Taylor Upshaw, all of these guys have to be able to win their individual battles and understand that if they're singled up and Aiden Hutchinson has two or three guys, somebody's going to be a free runner, and today that was Josh Ross. When everybody gets in on the fun, collectively, you get better. Don't go away, everybody. John Jansen's going to be back with Jim Harbaugh talking about a big, impressive win over the Washington Huskies. Back to Carol Moore, looking, pressure coming, sack time! Still a ton to work on. Um, Got to have better communication. A lot of stuff, um, but it's good only letting up 10 points, and you know you got a lot of stuff to work on. That means you know our, our potential as a defense is is uh, you know through the roof. Being out there with your brothers, looking the guy next to you, like oh, I know he got my back. You know, so I know he going he gonna hold it down for me. I know he gonna set the edge for me. I know he gonna you know like I know he gonna take on them double teams for me. Like uh, it, it's a beautiful thing, man. I'm just blessed and, and so fortunate to be a part of this team. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. It was a really strong win, uh, really great team win. 
thought the uh, defense, offense, special teams, I mean, had some uh, had great moments. And uh, yeah, I feel real, feel great about it. You know, uh, on a night Steve Hutchinson was uh, the honorary captain and John Jansen's behind the mic. I mean, it's pretty darn good performance by the offensive line. Well, let's start with the offensive line. You run the ball 56 times, 343 yards on the ground. What did that uh, performance mean to you and what did you see from it? Well, we saw I mean, great play by the offensive line, um, but also the backs. I mean, the backs, Hassan, Blake, uh, you could tell that they, the way they were running, it was hard. They, they were uh, Washington was having a hard time tackling them. Mm-hmm. They changed defense, defenses uh, probably four or five times during the uh, course of the game, and uh, great job by our offensive line of making all those adjustments. They were going from four down to three down to um, strong safety, Sam blitz. You know, the corner, double corner. I mean, they were. Uh, they were doing uh, they were doing everything they could, and uh, our guys just kept adjusting and and opening up the the seams. And Kate McNamara, uh, we'll talk about the passing game in a minute, but they kept bringing that corner as you mentioned, and then I think it was the fourth quarter, he stuck it in there and kept it and yeah. uh, and beat that corner blitz. Is that the type of guy that you continue to see at practice that is aware of what's going on, like in, in terms of the defense attacking you guys? Yeah, great observation. Uh, he kept it one time in the first half uh, where where he shouldn't have, but uh, you know the big play he made. When he kept it on the um, strong safety blitz, or Sam, one of them that was coming off the edge, uh, and then, then like get get the first down and get down, and uh, but he said he had one man to beat and uh, tried to make a move, which <laughs> uh, didn't work. At least he held out of the ball and got the first down. Any concern with the passing game? Not as much production as the running game, but is what do you need to do to bring it along with the run game? Yeah, well, our communication. We're. Uh, we, um, we weren't always playing the call. We weren't always, uh, um, you know, in the right spot and guys doing doing the you know, the right assignments. So uh, you know, that's that's a big one. You know, communication. Um, you know, where we talk and you know it's got to it's got to be better. You know, get the get the guys in the right spots. Defensively, putting pressure on the opposing quarterback. Four sacks tonight. Two and a half of those uh, from Aiden Hutchinson. David Ojabo had another one. Um, just the, the performance that Aiden Hutchinson continues to put out there. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, there was at one point where you're just like, oh, my gosh. I mean, uh, the way he's playing. And they, they resorted to everything. I mean, they were chipping him. Uh, they were finally chipping him with the tight end before he went on in his route. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – I can see it. I mean, we had the same problems in practice trying to block him. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see, uh, see other teams, you know, having the same issues. You know, we're not, again, we're not falling in love with our stuff because uh, we can get better. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It was Michigan's 10th night game in history, but it was a different night game because it was on September 11th, 20 years to the day after the terrorist attacks on our country. This night game wasn't just about a great Michigan victory. It was about commemorating heroism, sacrifice, compassion, and strength. To do this, A bagpipe played Amazing Grace as the victims from the Twin Towers attacks who were Michigan graduates were displayed on the school board. The Detroit Youth Choir sang America the Beautiful as a 100-yard long, 50-yard wide American flag was unfurled on the floor of the big house. Newly enshrined NFL Hall of Famer and Michigan great Steve Hutchinson was back as an honorary captain. The halftime show was an extravaganza by the Michigan marching band that would put a Las Vegas light show to shame. It was a night to remember on a date to reflect on an event that will be indelibly etched in all of our memories. Don't go anywhere, everyone. When we come back, it will be 20 years ago, and we will be talking about putting the pieces back together. It was uh, the darkest day in in, uh, my life. And I don't think there's anything in our society that um, can unify people uh, like uh, college football on a college campus uh, throughout the country every Saturday afternoon. And certainly in Michigan, um, I, I think uh, it's, it's special what a group of kids can do who uh, are playing for the love of the game and love the, for the uh, 
institution they represent. My girlfriend at the time, wife now, we were walking to class. I remember it was a lot of New York, New Jersey license plates on the car, and uh, they were crying and consoling each other, and we weren't, wasn't quite sure what had happened. When I saw the plane hit the other tower, I thought it was an instant replay. The, the fact that the Pentagon was attacked. It was tough. It was devastating. United 9 3. Have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. All you could do is just find someone and give them a hug because at that point, you know, that was, it didn't matter where you were from, what you looked like, it, uh, it affected us all. Ultimately, the decision was made not to proceed. I think that was the right decision. So the Western Michigan game was moved from September 15th to the 22nd. I remember putting that jersey on for the first time and, and having that American patch on our, on our chest. At that moment, you knew that you were just playing for more than your football team. You are playing for the entire nation. When everybody sang the national anthem and God bless America, um, he, he, I had tears. Everybody was a winner that day. And I was so pleased with the crowd that showed up. It was something you'll you'll never forget, and uh, it's something you wish in a lot of ways you could forget it. Twenty years ago, something none of us will ever forget. John, you and I were both in the middle of that in the sense that everybody in America, everybody alive knows where they were when the Twin Towers were attacked. But football, the NFL, and you being in the Washington Redskins at the time, you had a big part to play in not just the country healing itself, but tell the story about you playing and coming back and how football kind of brought everyone back to normal. Well, Pentagon, the, you know, the headquarters of our military was attacked at the same time. And we went down a few days after to hand out waters, to talk to some of those that were the first responders that they were there clearing the debris and searching for people that might still be alive. And just to be there and see it, it was, it was, it was surreal. And then as you mentioned, the the games were canceled that past weekend, college and the NFL. And when we came back, I played in the first Monday night game in Green Bay after um, that weekend. And it just was an unbelievable moment where we came out of the locker room and it didn't matter if you were wearing, you know, the, the green and gold or you were wearing the burgundy and gold. It was we were all together and it was an opportunity for if you needed an escape that you got to escape for three and a half hours and just watch a football game. But it was also an opportunity for everybody to have that one thing that brought us all together. And that's what sports has been so many times throughout my life, your life, and those that are sports fans is to be able to bring people together for a game. And that's all it is, is a game. But it, it has meant so much to so many people in that moment when the flag was as big as the field and we're all holding on to it, and everybody in the stands is singing the national anthem. It was a very unifying moment. I thought, from my perspective, that football coming back was a way for us as a country through football, mm -hmm. and that's why football was so important to this whole rebirth, of saying to those people who attacked us, sorry, but you didn't win. We are back, we are normal, and we will continue. And that's what I thought we got. I still get goosebumps thinking about that. And that's what I think football provided this country with after those terrible events in New York. And for all of us that were on the field or if you're in the stands, you realize that we have these, we have this ability because there are people out there that are protecting us. There are people out there that are giving their lives, their livelihoods, they're sacrificing their sons, their daughters so that we can do what we love to do. Amen. One thing I know for sure, don't ever forget. And make sure you join us next week. Michigan plays Northern Illinois. We'll be back right here with Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store.